Well, these are shots from a few of my favorite movies of recent years. Favorite for different reasons, but they were either shot on film or transferred to film and back to digital to get what people have been calling the film look. But why does the film look still matter? Aren't we done with it and moved on to digital? Well, yes and no. The film look makes a video have a classic feel and many of the movies made today still go back to that old look. Either shot on film or shot on digital and transferred to negative film to give it those film-like properties or just using certain lenses to give it a different texture, new and expensive productions still search for that vintage look. Now, whether it's a crime thriller like No Country for Old Men, a comedy musical like La La Land, or even a sci-fi action movie like Tenet, they all share similar traits. But why do directors and cinematographers choose to shoot on film or transfer the digital footage to negative film? Hey guys, I'm Cosmin, and I recently completed a project that came out exactly as it should when it came to color and mood. And that's the thing I want to focus on. But the way I achieved this look wasn't given by my normal workflow of grading in DaVinci Resolve, but by a plugin for DaVinci Resolve, Dehancer Pro. Dehancer is a film emulation program. Now, it's a plugin that simulates over 60 different films, both motion picture and still. And we're going to use this to get that look. And I'm going to take you through what Dehancer is and what you can do with it. What I believe is the film look isn't just a cool look for your footage because that's what we saw in cinema, but it also makes footage have a sense of emotion tied to it. So I believe that is the real reason why the film look still matters today for filmmakers and content creators. There are movies like Batman and Dune where they shot digitally on an Ari Alexa, transferred the digital footage to a film negative, and then scanned it back into digital to get what the director of the Batman, Matt Reeves, called that very particular sort of texture. How can we take all of the, the sort of texture that we associate with movies of the era that we were sort of inspired mm -hmm. to do, that kind of 70s stuff, and one of the ideas, which I know that he did partially on Dune, which was to go to negative, but we were going to take it even further, which we did, which was to actually go to IP. So there are sections mm -hmm. of the movie that literally are, are like scanned back IP, mm -hmm. and it was all so that we could get in that very particular sort of texture that would make you feel like you were immersed visually in this world. Let's face it, most people don't have the budget, the time, the manpower, or even the skill to make something look even remotely close to a film like No Country for Old Men. But a plugin like Dehancer, if used correctly, will greatly enhance your footage. It will make a video feel more natural, almost like a footage is unedited, untouched. It makes you feel like you are there and not just looking at something digital. It makes a film more believable. It's ironic that what actually makes film look like film are defects. So flaws in the technology that manufacturers have been trying to get rid of for years. But over the years, those same flaws like grain and dust and light leaks have maintained a certain nostalgia about them. Because that's the first thing we think of when we think of film from the 80s or 90s, there's also an instinctive nostalgia that film and film grain create inside of us. It's like every movie and every picture feel like sharing a memory. And that intimacy is what makes emotion feel stronger. And it's also what gives you better control over the way your video tells the story. The question on everyone's mind is, now that you started using the Hanser Pro, are you a professional colorist? And the short answer is, no, no you're not, because the Hanser Pro isn't really meant to be used as a shortcut to anyone trying to be a professional colorist. They're not trying to color the footage for you, even though you can do that very well. They're trying to add personality to your footage. And for projects that require quick deadlines, it's great because you can get the edit looking real good faster than the classical way of coloring in DaVinci. And that's exactly what you need 70-80% of the time. The Hanser doesn't replace the skill of a colorist and it's not trying to. It just gives you another way of achieving different looks. Anyone who's been working in the film industry or anyone who's been making commercials or even anyone who's been making content for a while now heard of film emulations, heard of grain. But the thing is, I only shot film a few times with stills, but I've never shot video 
like an actual proper film camera. And I'm guessing most of you haven't either. So one can't really say if the film profiles of the Hanser are accurate. And it's not about that because I'm not trying to debate the accuracy of the Hanser film profiles. It's not about being accurate, I would say, but more about giving the footage and the edit that feel and that mood you want it to have. Because one of my recent projects was about mountains and snow, I wanted it to have that blue icy look to it and it came out looking great thanks to Dehancer. The plugin is very simple to use, allowing you to put an entire grade on a single note. I usually put it on an adjustment layer above my edit so you can either have a super basic workflow with the plugin just kind of having a single note before Dehancer that does any bass or creative grading like saturation or contrast or just go into each clip and do the color correction. One thing to keep in mind is that the plugin will work best with correctly exposed and balanced footage. What I did was look at all the footage and some of them are a bit underexposed, some of them are overexposed. The temperature varies, so we might have footage that is blue or that has a greenish tint to it, or we might have footage that has an orange sunset look to it. So our main job here is to color correct the footage first just as you would normally do don't just jump into coloring first you have to take your footage and color correct it the answer still works fine but for maximum results to make the most out of your edit all footage has to look kind of the same just tweak the temperature if you should raw or maybe just play around with the exposure contrast hue so all the footage in your edit looks the same the great thing about this plugin is that there are so many options that you can easily find your own style and look so it really depends on your footage. At first I tried emulations from Kodak, from Fuji, so actual film stock I knew from working a few times with film cameras, but didn't really like them. And then tried the same emulations with different footage and they were exactly what I needed. So like so many other things, the more you try out different features, the more you experiment, the better the outcome will be. My absolute favorite thing about the Hanser, even though you can do a lot of things with it, but my absolute favorite thing is the grain. The grain algorithm is great. You can try the same thing with the Vinci Resolve and the grain looks good. You think it looks good, but when you try the grain and the Hanser, the same grain you applied earlier in the Vinci kind of looks like an overlay now. So it's that much of a difference. Sure, you can tweak it to perfection in the Vinci, but the grain and the enhancer looks more real, if that makes any sense. Now, what I don't like is it does make your system kind of slow. And I usually put it as a final touch. I put the enhancer effect on a separate adjustment layer for this. And when I edit, I have the layer disabled. So the system isn't working more than it has to. And then just enable it and scrub through the timeline and export. I noticed the same plugin working faster on my 16 inch MacBook Pro than my custom Windows PC with 8 gigabytes of video memory, a water cooled i9, 64 gigabytes of RAM. Even so, I would suggest keeping the timeline resolution at 1080 and then making it 4K only when exporting. It really hammers away at your PC specs. But sometimes as a Windows user, the drivers really act up. Many of the things that cause errors are because of Nvidia drivers, I would assume. But it's just something to keep in mind as a Windows user. Let's take a look through the plugin and all the sections so you know what to expect. Starting with input. This is where you choose your source profile. This includes specific camera profiles as well as Rec. 709 and even a Cineon log. So you also have different options in the sections including exposure and temperature compensation. In the film section, this is where you get to choose the film stock you want to work with. There's a lot to choose from, so there is plenty of room for a bit of fun. So you have the option below to push or pull your selected film stock. This kind of replicates the process of having a longer or a shorter development time in the darkroom. So it leads up to increased or decreased contrast. This is obviously a creative choice and it's a nice option to have. In the expand and print section, you have a variety of options to choose the contrast and saturation of your image. So if you want to compress your black and white points to match that of the film stock reference points, you can check the analog range limiter. This helps you give a more authentic look to the original stock if this is what you want to achieve. The color head section can be used to replicate the effects of printed lights on film stock. For example, if you wanted to cool down the image, 
you could add some blue. To keep things as authentic to the analog process as possible, the enhancer gives you the option to not preserve exposure. So you will notice a more significant change to your image with this set all the way to zero. The film grain is definitely my favorite and the enhancer does a fantastic job of not only giving you a variety of options to modify the grain to your chosen film stock, but it also does a great job of making it appear as part of the image and not just an overlay. The halation effect is visible as a subtle red glow around bright light sources. And the enhancer gives you several options to control how this appears in your image. The bloom section allows you to add a similar effect to that of a mist filter, but with having more control over the highlights and the image as a whole. And it just kind of takes the digital edge off. The vignette section, as the name states, allows you to add a customized vignette on your image. Film breath and gate weave are newer effects added to the enhancer and film breath will allow the image to have a slight change of contrast, exposure and color to the image. And traditionally, this would be caused by uneven emulsion coating, instability of the camera shutter and film development deviation. The enhancer has also a built-in false color option, so you'll be able to monitor the exposure of your image with the plugin applied. The output section allows you to have a control over how much impact in general the enhancer has on your image. And with the LUT generator, you can expose a LUT of your custom profile and use it to monitor on set. As a DP and content creator, especially, most of my edits go straight into social media. So whether it's YouTube, Instagram Reels, TikTok videos, whatever you crazy kids are into these days, most of my edits don't really require a heavy workflow of coloring in DaVinci. So for me, the Hanser Pro is worth it 100%. Just play around with it, experiment, use the grain, and I hope this really helps you.